Hello and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. In the previous episode, we look at how to use a 49 year old Copa compiler to produce this kind of uh, business reports. Uh, this will be a payroll report. And we saw that even a 49 year old Copa compiler by IBM, uh, in fact, this uh, Copa compiler was last updated in May 1972, but was released uh, almost eight or nine years earlier by IBM had a report writer function, as you can see here, that was able to make uh, this kind of beautiful reports. And even modern uh, COBOL compilers by IBM have some report function capabilities. However, the report writer uh, sec um, feature of the COBOL compiler was actually taken out of the modern IBM 64-bit COBOL, COBOL compiler and was sold to another company when now it's a paid feature. However, we saw that COBOL is a great um, uh, language to make kind of business reports. We also saw one of the things I said in the previous episode is that how COBOL is actually, even though it's a high level language, is very, very similar to assembler. And in this video, we're going to look at how to use assembler, mainframe assembler, to make kind of a very similar uh, payroll report on the mainframe. Now, uh, one of the things you'll see in this video is that we're going to use very, very, very basic assembler instructions. There are hundreds of new or maybe even thousands of new uh, assembler instructions on the mainframe, but we're going to use the one from the three, from the S360 and maybe one or two from the S370 and mainframes from the 60s and the 70s to make a very similar um, report on our mainframe. Of course, we will be using our beloved MVS 3.8 uh, mainframe running on top of Hercules, as you can see here, and, um, and I'm connected here to TSO, and we're going to start writing a, an assembler program to print uh, a payroll report from the same data. Before we go and start writing uh, this report, let's look at the data. That's always and here is the data. So you can see we have an employee number, we have an employee name, and the monthly salary. And I guess we want to just um, make a total monthly salary report or something like that. We'll, we'll see as we get going. So let's go and let's start edit our, where is it? Here. And let's start writing our report. Of course, we will need a job card to uh, call the assembler. And I'm going to do it like this. Uh, we have, I mean, you're going to be using Herc01 as my user. We call the assembler compile and go procedure. So we will uh, compile and immediately execute the binary. Um, this is the sys1 maclib. Now I've had this. I, I spoke about about the MacLib, the micro libraries, in uh, at length in previous videos. On the mainframe, assembler is kind of like C on Unix. Um, so on 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 Unix, you have uh, the Unix kernel, you have TCP/IP, and you have C as kind of the trinity that that holds Unix together. On the assemb on on the mainframe, you have assembler the MVS um, uh, nucleus and um, and uh, and uh, VTAM to hold it all together, which is the, the communication protocol in the mainframe. And assembler is, even though it's an assembler language, it's very, very similar to C in that it's almost, I want to say almost a high level language because of the very extensive macro library on the mainframe. Now, when it comes to the macro library, you have on the mainframe several versions. You have the maclib, which is the one that comes with the installation. And then you have a maclib and another and several other macro libraries where you put additions or extensions or even newer versions of the macro library. And so you need to be careful what kind of macro library you use on the mainframe. I'm going to keep it extremely simple here. In this case, I'm just going to use the macro library that comes with the installation. But be aware that there are um, uh, there are subtle differences between the various macro libraries on the mainframe, maclib, a maclib, etc. So now that we have that, um, let's start writing our program. So I will be going in this video through the very uh, basics 
of writing this assembler program. Uh, obviously, uh, we uh, need to tell the assembler if we want to expand the macros. We say gen, um, which tells the, the, the assembler to, extend, to expand all the uh, macros so that we can see in the listing that the assembler produces what happened. Uh, this is the name of the program, report. We enter the code section and then we immediately, as per, um, this is the, the convention on the mainframe on MVS that the caller saves the registers of the, sorry, the callee, the, the program that's been called, saves the registers of the caller. And for that, you need to have a save area where you can save all the registers of the caller. And, um, and so we start from 12 all the way to 14. We save all the registers and then we establish um, addressability. As you know, the convention on the mainframe is to have relative addressing. So therefore you need to have an, a, a, a register. In this case, it's register 12, which is gonna be the reference for all the relative addressing on the, of the program. Um, so once we have the addressability established, um, then we can start to um, write our program. Here in this section, we open a file, which uh, is the file we just saw before with the raw data. We have an uh, uh, input DCB data control block called input, and we have an output DCB the output data control block called output. And of course, this needs to match the, um, the job cards on the JCL, the job control language. And then the same um, for uh, the output, we say, uh, for, so once we uh, open the input and the output, we immediately put up a title on the, on the report uh, because that doesn't change. So that's gonna be happening here. We'll see in a moment what the title is gonna be uh, like. So this macro here says, put this string, so we're gonna define this as a string, into the output. Okay, now let's look what we're gonna do next. So we start by reading, read record here. That's just a, a label, kind of like a go-to target. And we use another macro uh, provided by MBS called get. And in this case, we use the, um, one of the access methods of MBS to open up a data set, uh, a sequential data set, and read it one record at a time. So there are several ways to open data sets. There is, um, um, there's several access methods. You can read them all at once. You can read them blocked. You can, read, of course, reading a record at a time is not gonna be the fastest. Uh, reading them blocked, it's easier. But for the purpose of this program here, I wanna keep it as simple as possible. So we are gonna use uh, QDEM here to um, to open up the uh, data set and get it one record at a time. So we're gonna get here uh, from the input uh, data control block, which is the pointer to the file, and put it in pay rec. So we read in an employee record, and I just showed before what the structure of the data is. Then we start to copy stuff. So we take the employee ID and copy it into the uh, output employee ID the employee uh, name and the salary. So now maybe is a good time to start to fill out the data area of this program so we understand better what's going on here. So let's look at our data structure. Um, let's make some space and maybe we put it here. Okay, so what's happening here? These are, this is our data, right? That's the variables of our assembly program. Save area we need because we need to, as I mentioned here, we need to store the registers of the caller of this of our program in a save area, which we're gonna be using at the very end of the program to restore the registers so that the caller is finding the, 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 the registers of the machine in exactly the same state as of the moment that it called our program. And that's very important to understand that the callee is responsible for storing the registers of the caller. Otherwise, bad things are going to start to happen. So once we save that, this is obviously 18 full words um, and uh, of 32-bit. So that's where we stole our save area. 
um, this is going to be our um, uh, this is called used by our macro to open up the input and output output data sets you can see in dcb out dcb so we define them here say in dcb is um, and that's the here we kind of uh, tell uh, the assembler what access methods we want to use we're going to use non-blocked here in this case and data set organization is uh, sequential and at the end of data here EOD that's very important because we have a facility here by the macro library that when we reach the last record we can tell it what what, um, what we want to have called so we tell it to jump to in close to this label once we reach the last record output DCB we tell it that uh, this is going to be just sequential and the DD name on the JCL is going to be in DD and out DD very simple data set organization PS but obviously in our case it's going to go to the printer and we look at the how we're going to look at the printer later then here we have a structure uh, here is our as, as you can see here this is exactly 80 bytes this needs to be exactly 80 bytes so we define here a record structure of um, of zero length uh, but it covers 80 bytes and then all these are kind of structures within the same record and we have employee ID, employee salary, and then a filler all the way to 80 bytes. That's why it's 43 here, 80 bytes so far. So this should be exactly one card. And why is that important? Because if we go here, if we look at our input data, um, this is the first four bytes. And at byte 11, we have all the way to 33 we have the name and then at 34 we have the monthly salary so if i look here uh, we have from 4 to 6 21 and then um, and then at this uh, at this point we have the salary the monthly salary as the our comments uh, are indicating and then just a filter all the way to um, 80 bytes because there's no data after here okay so that's our input data. And then here we have the output data. Um, as you saw before, the first thing, once we open the output data set, which in our case, of course, as I said, is gonna to go to the printer, but it could also go to a file. We print the title. That's why it's called P for print. So here's payroll report BIM corporation. And then we have a record. We define a record of 133 bytes and then we have some empty space then we have employee id employee name and the monthly salary and uh, and the filler all the way down to 133 so this way we have defined an input record and an output record so that we can uh, fill out these records both in reading in and reading out So knowing what the data structure is, now we can understand what's happening here. So we're reading the record into PayRec, which is um, here, this record here. And then we start to copy stuff from employee ID into the output employee ID at the proper uh, place on the report here, employee ID. Then we copy the employee name from here we copy it at this location and then we take the salary and copy it uh, to this location okay uh, we have here and one more space where you can put the dollar sign so we uh, hold the space to put the dollar sign which you could do it also in different ways but right now that's how we want to do it and um, and then here something interesting happens pack it you see an instruction called pack what we're doing is we're taking the salary which we read in the input and we pack it and I put in Z for uh, pack salary so um, on the mainframe we have packed uh, arithmetic and we have um, uh, decimal arithmetic so in this case I want to pack it and I uh, packing means uh, kind of in one byte fitting two numbers uh, very simply said, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. I'm not going to go into that, but uh, you know you can look up yourself what the pack and unpack instruction does, and then add packed 
and all the arithmetic functions for packed arithmetic. So there's multiply packed, divide packed, subtract packed, add packed, and etc. So we put the salary and into a, a, a an intermediate holding variable called z salary, and then we take the this variable and we add it in a packed arithmetic instruction on the mainframe. So this is a machi machine instruction that adds packed decimal and add it to a total variable. And um, so that's what we do here. And then we write the out area, we write into the output data, right? Um, into the output. And then we go back to read record. And so this is our reading input until we reach the last record on the input and then as we know as we defined here uh, where is the here then once we reach the last input record we go to enclose which we don't have in our code yet so where do we put it uh, enclose i think will fit perfectly in here so Okay, so now we start to see the full program. So once we reach the last input record from the input data set, we jump here. That's uh, provided by the macro library. And then um, we start to um, print out the total of the monthly salaries for our report. And, um, and then we need to find a way to print this so that it's humanly readable. I'm gonna get into that in a second. And then we put the total line in the report, we close, and we restore the registers here so that the caller will find its registers in the right place, and we are done. Oops, sorry, actually this is the wrong place to put this all. Uh, obviously it needs to be here. Okay, so once we uh, process the last input record, we'll jump in here, we uh, print the total, and we restore the registers. We put in return code of zero here, that's what this does, return 1412. So if you use this macro to return, you need to also have the save macro here that matches. So save and return kind of go together. Uh, this needs to be the same. And, uh, and that's how we store restore our registers. So now let's look at how to add some numbers in, uh, in this report. So let's go down at the very end. And as you can see here, I'm starting, I define some variables. P stands for packed. So I'm defining a packed variable, Z salary, which is the one we use for adding the monthly salaries here. As you can see here, we say, um, pack salary which we take from the input data set so we take this salary here for each record and what we do is we we take it and uh, pack it into a variable called z salary which we define here and then we have another field called total salaries uh, which of course is a little bit longer because we're adding lots of numbers together we initialize them with zero obviously and then we uh, add packed as you can see here we add packed this is what this instruction does two numbers together and the result is going to be put into z dot cell and um, so that we have the total of uh, this record and then we write out area into the output so out area of course is this record here as we've mentioned before and what happens is that at the very end, once we reach here the last input record, we have some work to do. What is the work? So first of all, um, we put in a EDWD, which is just a way of formatting an output data so it's human readable for the, for the mainframe. Um, those are uh, uh, blank, and then a number, number, number. And then at some point we have the comma for the thousands and that's how you format it. And 
So this is the called the edit mask. Some people call it the edit mask. And um, I use the edit mask to move it into a field. And then uh, I load the address of the, of the field into register one. And then I edit, I kind of overlay the, the output, the total that we have over this mask. And by doing that, um, by out overlaying the output of a packed variable over the mask that we defined, we get a human readable output. Uh, it's going to make sense once I run this program. And then we just uh, take the total line, which we defined here, total line, and we print it out into the output. And then we close the input and the output, and we're done. Now, there's many, um, probably much nicer ways to do what I just done here, but this uh, will work for printing out a report of the monthly salaries that our company, our fictitious company called uh, BIM Corporation will have to pay for all its employees. So let's try to, oh, what, one more thing that we need to do obviously is to, we're using here symbolic register names, R13, but our real registers, of course, for the assembler cannot have the R. So we need to find a way to tell the assembler that R means just the assembler name. How do we do that? To do that, we need to escape uh, the end of this uh, sys in to the uh, job control language. How do we do that? Obviously, this is the sign, which can be changed. You can define a different escape, but this is the escape selling this. From this card on, it's not the assembler sys in input again. It's just the normal um, JCL. So we have your sys print, so we can print out to whatever class we define. U dump, just in case we dump or append and then out DD in DD. And that's very important because out DD, uh, output data definition, and input data definition is what we have here. So if you look at the macros here, we say in DD, out DD, and those need to match. If, if this doesn't match, it's not gonna work. But as you can see, it's actually very simple. The macro library makes assembler programming on the mainframe extremely simple. I wouldn't say, basically the same as using C on Unix. It's the system programming language, but the macro library makes it almost a high level language. So now that we have this, I would like to just give it a spin and see how this goes. Let's put it first into held output. Later on, we put it on the, on the printed um, output. We're gonna look at that. Submit, job 590 and 3.8. Oh wow, <laughs> I'm always happy when this happens. So return code zero. This compiled or oh, assembled just fine and then also executed fine. So let's see what this what happened here. So, um, so this is the output of the assembler already. And you can see an MBS uh, with the amazing RFE uh, environment by Greg Price. We have everything color coded, so that's really nice. So we have here the C section, um, the code section, sorry. And, uh, and then we have a macro that saves the registers. And then we establish addressability. We use a some register 12. Now, as you can see, we use register 12, which is actually recurring a lot because uh, you can see this register, which is D in uh, many other instructions. So this is going to be appended to the address of all operations because we used our register 12. Um, then we open here and here is a plus. What does this plus mean? This is like the expand the expansion of the macro. Uh, so the assembler takes this macro and the macro library tells it that this actually there is here a, um, a no op for alignment on the on the on the storage. As you know, on the assembler you do sometimes or Often in the, in the, for early mainframes and, and less and less for later mainframes, you have to take care of storage alignment. And that has something to do with the electronic circuitry, the way that uh, memory was accessed on the early mainframes, it was interleaved. And so you need to know a little bit about the architecture of our storage of our memory work to understand the alignment, but you do need alignment now and then. So then here we have a very, as you can see here, SVC. So that is kind of like a system call in Unix. Uh, this is the call to the uh, nucleus, to the operating system, to open 
uh, a file. And so we do this for in DB and the out, in data control block and the out data control block. And then we write the title. And again, here, this since this is a micro, the expansion of the micro, you don't, obviously you don't have expansion if it's a, a regular um, assembler instruction such as load address that doesn't require uh, expansion. So MVC is a normal is a normal instruction um, which was present from the very very first uh, S360 mainframe. So that that is not a micro. That's a real machine instruction. Packing, of course, is also machine instruction. So we do all that. And then at close, we go through all these uh, machine instructions. And then the close obviously is a macro, and you can see an expansion of the macro. Then we restore the registers, we set return code zero. So you can see here, that's exactly what happened. So this here um, is actually uh, here, return code, we, we set zero into, um, into uh, register 15, which is the return code indicator. And then we branch 14. What is branch 14? Branch 14 means return to caller. And how do we know the address of the caller? Well, because we restored the registers here and the register 14 will always point to the last address uh, plus one where the uh, caller wants to be returned to. Literal pool and then just the data save areas which are defined here. As you can see, mostly just empty. And, and then that's it. So. Um, as you can see, for instance, here, this is exactly the hex decimal in EPSIDIC of the string here. So let's see what happens. So once it, um, this is the, all the our equates, then we can see here the symbol, the cross reference of the symbols that we use. It says for every variable, uh, the length, the value, where the definition is, and where it's being referenced. So that's very useful sometimes for debugging. Then um, we see there's no statements have been flagged for this assembly. We were lucky in this case. Records read from system input 85. So now this is um, what's, what's happening um, for the execution. And uh, this is the linker talking to us here. Uh, the length of the assembler program is 3A zero and it starts at the address ac010 so this is the linker and the linker linked it and called it so it needs to know where it's going to be loaded in memory for the re for the resolution of the addresses and here's our report and as you can see here that's why it was important to have that edit instruction with the mask so that we could have the coma for the thousands okay so very simple if you look at it again the part where we use the edit with mask here. Let me go down here so you can see here. We put the edit mask here with the thousands, which was defined here. The 6B here is a comma. Oops. The 6B here is a comma. And that's what we use in our report here. Okay. So we kind of overlay a mask over the packed data field. And that's it. So this ran actually, we were very lucky, or I was very lucky that it ran the very first time without any problems. Um, we could kind of put in a deliberate error to see what happens, right? Um, I'm sure that if we do it this way, something bad is going to happen. Well, in this case, actually also executed fine. Um, but we should do it right. Let's see what happens if we try to force an error.
Let's see what happens if we do this. 592. It's still executed fine, but obviously we don't have a total now anymore, so that's correct. Uh, let's try the force and a bend. Oh yeah. I have an idea. Let's see what happens now. Yeah, so now we abend it. So S0C1, zero, um, zero which means illegal instruction. Why? Because it tried to jump to an address which does not exist. Okay, so as you can see here, it wants to jump to this address, but this address is not defined anywhere. And so obviously it's going to bend. And when we bend, we get the full uh, MBS style of bend. So we could go and research, and I have videos in this channel that show how to read an event. And uh, uh, for here, we can see here we have Q using QSAM for a, uh, a non-buffered uh, reading. But uh, we could use this, this, uh, this event now to read the cause of the problem, and we will get there eventually. Now, the reason why we have an event is because we put in sysabend, or you can just put udump or sysabend, or depending on how big of an information output you want to get. But um, by by um, putting this kind of wrong jump instruction, uh, we now caused an event, obviously, and that's okay. So. Um, so now that we have this program running just fine, let's see how we can make this into real output. So as you know, and I've pointed out in my previous, um, in my previous uh, video, which is HercPrint. So if you go to Software Development Laboratories, HercPrint, uh, it's a, it costs only, I think, about $15 or so. It produces amazing prints. Uh, here it is, $15. And it has, um, I also obtained the fonts for the 1403 printer, which is the printer that I really like. And so we can now start to print there. And uh, if you look here, I have a directory where I obtain all the nicely formatted outputs that originate on this mainframe. Here, a report, and that's the one we just uh, executed, the program we just wrote with the full. Uh, printer um, listing of the assembler program and somewhere here we should have now the report yes so payroll report you can also put it if you wanted we could move this a little bit more to the center but and here we have the running total so uh, and as you can see if we look go look at a an assembler program written in COBOL Still the same. So if this is the one from the previous video, as you can see, April 27. Very similar. So we enter the program, we open the file, we read the salary in a record structure, just exactly the same like we have in our program. Then we have the output for the report writer and we need to place them in the right place and then we have something which adds a total and we print it out so if i want to see how many um, output input records so this is 125 cards with the jcl around it and let's see how big the assembler is um, it's actually smaller so 103 cards red so as you can see here, actually assembler in this case is a little bit smaller. The program is slightly smaller and we do the exactly same thing and probably a lot faster, right? If I went and checked the execution time for this program, um, it's, uh, it's going to be tiny. Uh, so if I wanted to see here, I mean, it's not even within a, a, a 
tenth, hundredth, within a ten thousandth of a second. It's so small, you can't even see the difference so, of the execution. Um, yeah, this is extremely fast. So, um, as you can see, Assembler and COBOL are really quite, quite similar. And it's uh, you can do things just uh, the way you would do it in COBOL. Assembler on the mainframe is extremely simple. It's, uh, it's really easy to learn and uh, there's no even a need to learn something like COBOL if you don't know COBOL. And the other uh, message here is that obviously assembler is very important on the mainframe. It is the systems programming language of the mainframe, similar to like C uh, is for Unix. And so um, I just thought that we conclude the series of the report writing both in COBOL and, P and the assembler. We could also in PL1, but PL1 is very going to be very similar. Um, just to show you how simple it is to write a program in uh, Assembler. I will be putting this program here in uh, on my GitHub repository and I will point to the GitHub repository with this source code in the description below this video. If you have any questions about Assembler, about this program, any suggestions, I'm, I, I mean I know there's a hundred ways to improve this program with newer instructions, write it in a little bit more elegant way, um, that is well understood. But I think it was just for us to here to look at how to do something very similar to what we did in Cobol in Assembly. That's what that was the purpose of this video. Thank you for watching. 